would it be wrong for people to begrudge Christian Eriksen a big move this summer? Or, and I think Simon, you're in this school of thought, he has a degree of loyalty to show to Brentford that having taken a punt on him, when nobody else appeared to be ready to take a punt on him, that maybe Christian owes Brentford another spell of his own time. Loyalty goes both ways. He, he was an afforded an opportunity where everyone else was maybe a little bit nervous uh, around the whole situation. I think we all were when he first came back. You know, after the you know horrific scenes um, that we witnessed during the Euros, but have Brentford benefited from him being there without a shadow of a doubt? Because if not, they were in free fall. They could have ended up in a a, rele- a serious relegation battle and could have gone down. So they've taken the benefit of, of Christian Eriksen. If now he wants to move on and he's offered something else, he's the right to do that. Um, I think you know. Yes, he will be internally grateful. But if Christian Eriksen would have gone there and not played well. Would they still be offering him a deal? And saying, well, you know, we, we'll, we'll give you another chance. We'll give you another season on big money. Not in the slightest. Mm, mm. So, it's the way football works. Loyal, loyalty is thrown around when it suits. That's the problem in football. Where do you stand at it, Simon? I mean, it's understood that his head's been turned and why wouldn't it be by Manchester United who reportedly have made an offer for him? But I think you're in the school of thought that he should say, Brentford, you came for me once. I'll, I'll, I'll well, serve think, you I well think, further. I think there's a balance to be had between Brentford not putting an option in place that gave them the protection of not having to have this conversation because you would like to think that Brentford would have brought him in, brought him on a contract, had the option. Now, maybe he didn't want to give them that option and maybe it suited him to have a short-term contract. We'll not know this because the argument is well, if Brentford wanted to take care of him, they could have given him a longer-term contract. But they took the risk, they took the plunge, they gave the backdrop for him to be able to go on to a stage where he could rage. Of course you expect him to play well. And that's, a you know, with due respect, if he came in and was getting paid a decent salary, you would expect him to do well. I do think there's something called integrity. I do think you don't, you do have to remember that not only was it your talent that got you to a position where you're now a sought-after commodity, it was the opportunity you were afforded by others, where others wouldn't give you that opportunity. It's really great where other people can see the vision when the vision arrives. And there's something that I think is lacking in, in people's attitude when they don't want to think that sometimes loyalty's right. Danny's right, loyalty's thrown around in wild abandon. But there are times when loyalty is reasonable and integrity is reasonable. Now, it's difficult because the boy is now having his head turned on the back of the opportunity that he took with his talent that somebody gave him the opportunity to to, to show, to showcase. And of course you didn't expect him to come in and do badly and there was a chance he would have done. And we don't know whether he went in there and said, I only want a six-month contract or, and, and but Brentford tried to say we'll have an option. But, but, but isn't that the same with every player that moves on during their contract? This is a unique set of circumstances. This is a landscape where this boy as we know, suffered the ultimate on a football pitch. I, 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 I get and that. And no one wanted to go near it. <laughs> Even federations wouldn't license him to play. So he's now come into a football club. I, I, I get that, Simon, that, but I, I, I had an issue when I, when I was at Norwich, left there, went to Charlton. You know, unbelievable what Charlton did for me. Um, obviously got, got promoted, got into the Premier League, and then I had the option to lose. I still had a, a three years left on my contract, but I was desperate to leave at that point. We got relegated. People say, well, it's mercenary, this, that, and the other. I should have been loyal. No, I wanted to move. They benefited from it. I benefited from it, and, and we moved on. Yeah, if that's a, but hang on. But if that's an equation where the football club benefits and you benefit, and it's a mutually agreed perspective, then the fans will rant and rave about it. But if the football club was comfortable with the transaction, then that's fine. But like you said, then, then that's, but if that's, they, if the football club wasn't, if the football club wasn't comfortable tra- for not putting an option in, well, maybe Brentford were in a situation where the player refused oh, to sign no a longer term contract. So, so, so a player, so a player that had no other option, no other club would take him was in no but, but, position so to maybe so, make those so, so demands. Let me get this right, right? <clears throat> Matthew Benham and this football club that have run their operation really, really well are that obtuse, in your view, and that opaque that they wouldn't have put an option in a contract to well, protect they, themselves. They obviously haven't. Well, then there must be a reason, mustn't there? And that reason probably <laughs> is is the player backed himself. You'd have backed yourself. And as far as your example is concerned, and that's what a lot of football people do, they take it down to themselves. If the club weren't happy with your situation then you damn well should have stayed because you were part of the team that got the team relegated. But it, but it was still a massive risk. Uh, but you don't risk. want that. You, it was, you still, a massive, do is, it was still a massive risk to take him because you, we didn't know if he was going to play well. But, we didn't know what his health situation was going to be. But that, but, but I don't understand what that's got to do with the price of cheese. If they didn't give him an op- if they wanted to give him an option because they were well run football they, club, they, 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 they did good business, right? But, but they, they gambled on he might be a success, he might not. So it they was take, a phenomenal So they success. take an option. Right, and the option didn't. is theirs, and the reason being why. So what we're saying is, this football club that runs itself well, I think we unilaterally agree they run themselves well. In this instance, they're village idiots. They take somebody on spec. They don't put themselves in a situation where the upside is theirs to benefit from, 
and now they've got the they've got they've got the win of losing him for everybody else to get the benefit of. That makes no sense. That means that they're completely negligent in what they've done what, because what, they put what, what, well, well, then they must be because because he had no other option. Or, what would you or do, Danny? he didn't want to do it. If you were Eric, well, Danny, they, they, what would they, you they do? Be well, we won't take you then. What would you do, mate? After short-term everything game. He's, after everything he's come through. So, so that's what I'm saying. They've had short-term game. Well, they had no choice in that in that position. I, How I, would you view it, Danny, if it was you? I mean, if Manchester United are indeed waiting in the wings and Brentford want them to carry on there, and we're hearing Newcastle are also in the mix. If you were Ericsson, what would you do? Loyalty, it'd be or, gone. It, it, in the back of his mind as I, well. I would go, yeah, it'd be right. go. It'd be, Without it, a shadow of a doubt. He'd be gone. Where? Well, where, where, I'd go where I wanted to go. Wherever, he thought, that. wherever if, he thought the opportunity was best for him, he'd be gone yeah. quicker than a quick thing from Quickland. If, if I wanted to stay at Brentford, I'd stay at Brentford. If I wanted to go to Newcastle, Manchester United, I'd go there. If I thought that was the best place for me to be. And, there you, and there you have the wonderful self-interest that football exudes. Well, no one else is going to look after me. Well, if you have a contract, in your instance where you gave an example of wanting to leave, whichever club it was, you had three years left on your contract, and what you wanted to do was leave because the destiny you'd been helped, you'd helped him fulfilling, oh. which was relegation, you didn't want any of. Right? Not for me, thanks very much. It doesn't suit me. And there's something about that that but, doesn't but there was, there sit was very also, well with there me. There was also a point in that where Charlton had to sell somebody. It was either me or Mark Kinsella. Well, you brought the example of yourself into oh, the no, equation. Oh, no, yeah. I'm, I'm quite happy to take that. One of us had to go. Mark didn't really want to leave at that point. Charlton bought me for two hundred fifty thousand, sold me for four and a half million. Four, pay, Fourteen months later, and paid your yeah. wages. They, yeah, they, yeah. they did. They did all I tell right. You, Simon, I was on twelve hundred pound a week. That they much? did. All, they did all right out of that deal. Trust me. They and made more and than you enough can't money. Argue with that, Simon. And there'll be a little. If you, if and you're there'll the be a little. There's a at that, that time. That's, that's a great that bit of business. Charlton and going, if, Simon, and, for another two seasons. But in the example, and 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 there'll be a host of players that they signed that didn't do the outcome that you provided, right? So it swings and roundabouts, right? But Danny brought it into the equation about the circumstances surrounding his transaction. Now, his transaction, if it was mutually beneficial, fantastic. Of course, you don't sit there and cry about it. If Charlton were happy to sell him, get a big bag of money for him, and he wanted to go anyway because he didn't want to be responsible for the part that he contributed, the team getting relegated, that's fantastic. Everyone works. But in this instance, I was responsible. We got relegated. But you wanted to get away from that. You wanted to go. Well, I, wanted, I, I, want to I, wanted, I wanted to better my career and I wanted to play in Europe. But I went to, I went to and Leeds. That's great for you. But that's great for Ooh. you. But that's great for you. But if that were not the club's agenda and the club turned around to you and said, no, I don't think so. Well, he could have kept me. But but in this but instance, the, but the moment the moment Richard in, Murray in came instance, to me and said, "If we get X amount of fee, we the, want you to don't go." Don't talk about Richard Murray because he's the village idiot. But, but the bottom line is, but, that, but, that, but that's what they did. They said, "If we get but, X amount, but you, you brought but you brought yourself into the equation, right? So yeah, that was a, that was a mutually beneficial deal. In this equation, if there's no advantage in this to Brentford, their reward for taking the plunge, backing the situation is, is 130 million staying in the Premier League. Well, we, we we can surmise as to whether they were dropping like a stone or whether well, Ericsson was, 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 I mean, was an equation Ericsson added value they won to more, it. They won more games since Ericsson arrived. Do you think you should show loyalty, Simon, by I, saying yes to I think, Brentford? I think it's a very difficult one because I think that you would have liked to think that Brentford would have put in an option to give themselves control of the situation. It makes me wonder why would they you, haven't done that. Would you stay? That. Would I stay? Yeah. Um, well, I'm a different animal. I'm built upon integrity and built upon feeling that I don't bite the hand that fed me. I would remember what's done for me. I would always remember what's done for me. The reasons, why, the reasons why I stayed at Crystal Palace and chucked in another 10 million to give it to Steve Parrish for nothing is because well, I felt I had... A, hold on, you ask me a question, I'll give you an answer. I felt that I had a greater responsibility than just looking after myself. So the answer to your question is, I probably... Some would say that's foolish. I, well, some would say it's integrity. Some would say it has, it has the courage of your convictions to back yourself and believe that... Actually, actually you've got to pay me, by the way. I've now proven myself. Don't be giving me £70,000 a week. You've got to give me £120,000, £130,000 a week because that's what I'm worth to you. So you've got to pay me... But I'm here now, and I recognise the value that was attached to me. I recognise the support was given. Brentford are going to pay him that. Then, then he has an argument to turn around and say, "Hold on, you can't so, ask so me to so stay." So would you go? If, if so, if you were at Brentford, if and I gave, Manchester if United, I gave, if I gave, Newcastle if I came, Brentford, came in, if I gave Brentford, well, we got Newcastle. If you gave me the first, if you gave me first dibs to Brentford, if I if I gave you first dibs at Brentford, and you said, "Well, I'm sorry, but I want you to get on nickel and dime money," then I said, "Well, I gave you first dibs. I did my bit." I backed you, you've backed me, here's the opportunity, I'm showing some loyalty, but you can't ask me to be financially impacted. And if Brentford said, well, no, we can't afford that, I said, well, I'm going to, like you just said, I helped you preserve 130 million quid, and I'll do the same next year, so you've got to pay me. So, so let's assume he's going to double his wages by moving. Would you stay or would you go? If Brentford, again, I'll walk you back slowly, if Brentford offered me the same money then I would be in a situation saying, at this stage in my career, 30 years of age, I've played for Milan, I've played for Tottenham, I've done great things, and I, and, I, and, and Man United, is, by the way, is a bleeding mess, right? and I don't know what's going to happen but there. would you go? No, I've told but you, they, they are good, but they I are going to stay. They are that's me. Offer more money. But that's me. Without, but without, without, yeah. You wouldn't go. If, if Manchester United no. were doubling Brentford's offer 
of what he's going to earn per week. We are assuming... If you were at Ericsson, you'd well, stay my, at my, my assumption in all of this, and, and, and Danny's right to unpack this and unpack this, my assumption is, is that there is a real relationship between Brentford and Ericsson that Brentford have really taken a punt yeah, on him. Yeah, it's Thomas right? Frank. And, and, and Brentford will feel... Because Brentford might not care. But if Brentford do care and they do feel there's a sense of entitlement because they're the ones that took the plunge, none of these other saucy sods that have watched the vision arrive, right, none of them wanted to give Ericsson the chance. So Brentford's reward, and you're going to say, yeah, if they got 130 million quid, fine, I get that too. But I'm talking about the reality of what Brentford could and should be able to have an opportunity to do in this situation. Of course, the argument could be, well, then you should have done your homework and got him an option in the first well, place. But also, I don't believe that they wouldn't have done What happens if they have a horrific start to the season? Suddenly, Thomas Frank gets sacked. New manager comes in, doesn't fancy Ericsson. He's sat on his backside doing nothing. Oh, 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 oh Danny, go bump your head somewhere else. Who's Fine. not going to fa- Who's not going to fancy Ericsson? He's been the best player in Brentford. Why would he not fancy him? If Man United well, because, fancy him, who's going to manage? Who's going to manage Brentford? That wouldn't fancy Ericsson. New Ericsson. managers come in and they have a different way of playing. All sorts. But if he's going to go to a top six club, which we're talking about, why in Christ's name would a new manager not fancy him? I'm just well, trying it to ha- happen, happens at a lot of football. Clubs. I'm just trying to picture if he's in the country choose an outlook, and he's behind the wheel of his car. Christian Ericsson's probably pulled over and <laughs> loving every minute of this. Christian, simple for us. Tell us where you're going to go. Coming up to twenty past twelve. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.